Okay, welcome everybody. My name is Ricardo Vinuesa. Uh, I'm an associate professor at the KTH in Stockholm. And today I'm going to tell you how we can use machine learning to try to improve computational fluid dynamics. Uh, this is actually a study that we recently published together with Steve Branton in Nature Computational Science. Uh, here is the reference. And what we show you is that you can use machine learning for three main things. So one can use machine learning to try to accelerate direct numerical simulations. One can also use machine learning to try to improve modeling, eh, basically in the context of uh, LES and RANs. And finally, one can use machine learning to try to obtain more robust reduced order models. And that's uh, the topic that we're going to be discussing today. So we're going to zoom in and try to uh, understand a bit better how machine learning can help in the context of RAM development for turbulent flows. Uh, essentially, uh, we can start with uh, POD, proper orthogonal decomposition, uh, which is a very well known and established method to produce uh, reduced order models uh, in the context of fluid mechanics. Uh, this uh, decomposition has two nice properties. One is optimality, which means that our modes are going to be ranked from more to less contribution towards the reconstruction uh, of, the, of the original signal. And also the second property is the orthogonality, which will in principle help with the interpretability of these modes and with uh, developing more parsimonious uh, models. So what we want to do in this work, and this is work uh, together with Hamid Reza Ibasi, you can find the reference over here. This is published in the uh, journal Expert Systems with Applications. Uh, we want to uh, retain those properties of optimality and orthogonality while being able to have a non-linear model decomposition of complex turbulent flows. Uh, so that's what I'm going to be discussing a bit more uh, with you today. Uh, we're going to use this database. So this is a, a very well resolved uh, high fidelity simulation of the turbulent flow between two obstacles. Uh, so we actually have a quite complete database where we have a number of obstacles and matrices and arrays. Uh, in this case, we just took the simplest case, which is in a skimming flow configuration. And uh, what we show here is that we can analyze the 2D plane at the center, right, between the two obstacles, so right uh, at the middle of the two obstacles. Um, and what we will do is that we will be able to uh, leverage what we know about autoencoders uh, to try to understand a bit better the properties uh, that one can embed to have a, a nice and robust uh, reduced order model. So basically, uh, we're going to start by showing you an autoencoder, and I'm sure many of the people in the audience uh, know uh, about these techniques. These are deep learning methods uh, in which we can progressively reduce the dimension of the, um, of the original signal. Uh, and as you can see, here at the middle you have the latent space, uh, which basically constitutes a compressed representation of the original data. And then uh, that first step is what we call the encoder, and going from the original space to the latent space. Uh, now when we are in the latent space, we can use a decoder to recover the original signal and therefore be able to, um, well, to, to obtain that compressed version of our um, data set. Now, autoencoders are uh, interesting because, of course, they're based on deep learning. They are uh, producing nonlinear um, uh, compressed versions of the original data. Uh, the biggest problem is that they are not uh, optimal nor orthogonal. And those are two things that are interesting when it comes to interpretability and uh, parsimonious representations of our original system. So what we will be doing is that we are going to try to um, understand how to impose these properties. And <coughs> an interesting work by Fukami and others, this is Koji Fukagata's group, uh, is based on hierarchical autoencoders. So the hierarchical autoencoders uh, are aiming at uh, imposing this property of the uh, optimality. So you start with an first autoencoder, as you can see here, which has uh, dimension uh, one in the latent space, and um, then we obtain the first latent variable. And then what you do is that you go to a second autoencoder in which you will fix the dimension of the latent space to two then you retain that first mode that you obtained, that la first latent variable, and you will get a new latent variable with a lower contribution towards the reconstruction of the original signal. So you can do that recursively. You can have a hierarchy of autoencoders in such a way that you have modes or, or latent uh, vectors, actually, which will have less and less contribution towards the original signal. That uh, representation will be uh, optimal, but will still not be orthogonal. We want to be able to impose uh, that orthogonality in some way. And that's where we want to be able to uh, introduce some stochasticity 
in our distribution uh, in the latent space. That's how we are uh, considering the framework of the beta variation autoencoders, uh, which I'm showing you here. Uh, essentially, we're going to consider P of X as a distribution of the original data, and P of R as a distribution of the data in the latent space. So knowing this, what we want to do is that we want to um, maximize this quantity over here, which is the marginal likelihood. This is essentially uh, the approximation of the original distribution uh, with the parameters theta of the neural network. And we're going to have two distributions. Basically, we're going to have a probabilistic decoder, which will take us from the latent space to the original space. And because this latent space is um, given by a certain distribution, uh, this is going to be a generative model. We're going to produce samples in that, um, from that latent to that original space. And the other distribution that we have uh, is the one on the, at the bottom, which goes from the original to the latent space. And this is a probabilistic encoder. Or in other words, this is a recognition model. Okay? So having this, what we can actually do is that we can, uh, well, we know that our uh, distribution, the latent space, um, is given by a Gaussian distribution. Eh? So we, have, uh, we are able to sample from it. Uh, and we are actually going to add a random noise given by a Gaussian distribution. This is that uh, epsilon that you can see over here uh, to be able to uh, get those samples in that, um, in that latent space. Uh, what we can actually show is that beta variation autoencoders can have this loss function that you can see here at the bottom, where this parameter beta, and this is uh, basically a penalization factor that will allow us to promote learning statistically independent variables in the latent space. And this is done uh, by basically minimizing the distance between P of R, which is the distribution of the latent space, and the product of its marginals. And that's quite cool because in the end, this will give us two nice properties. You will uh, be promoting learning quantities in the latent space that are statistically independent. Uh, and at the same time, we will be also promoting uh, a lower size of the latent space. So we will be able to have more latent variables that are uh, zero. Uh, so the goal is to have a disentangled and parsimonious latent space. Uh, this is interesting because, of course, all of this happens in the latent space, right? These variables are going to be as statistically independent as possible, but when you decode them and look at them in the physical space, you will be able to see uh, the spatial modes, uh, and we will show you soon how um, orthogonal, actually, those, um, those modes in physical space can actually be. So this is actually quite uh, promising as a statistical approach. Uh, I'm showing you here at the bottom, that's the encoder. Uh, so we are going from the original space through the successive reduction of the dimension until reaching the latent space, where you can see the mean, the standard deviation, and also the noise. So this is where we sample from. Then at the top, I'm showing you the decoder. And the decoder is, of course, the model that is taking us from the latent space to the uh, original space again, uh, to the physical one. So that's basically the idea. We want to uh, combine what we know about our latent space uh, so we can produce these modes in physical uh, space that are actually uh, nonlinear, but that try to have those properties of orthogonality and optimality. So essentially, uh, if we look at the reconstruction at an is basically an instantaneous flow field, and this is again the flow uh, between the two obstacles, here is the reference, and you can get an idea of how the turbulent fluctuations look like. Uh, and I'm going to show you the reconstruction in four different uh, reduce order model approaches. Right Here at the bottom, you have the POD. So this is how much energy re you reconstruct with only five modes. It turns out you only reconstruct around 30%. Obviously, the field that you obtain is quite filtered and attenuated compared to the original data. And the other three panels show the reconstruction uh, with the autoencoder-based approaches. All of them around 90% of the reconstruction. This one over here is the one that comes from the beta VAE, from the beta variation autoencoder. So here, uh, on this panel over here, I'm showing you a detailed view of the flow between the two obstacles. So you can see, for instance, these regions of a strong fluctuation, both positive and negative. And you can see that the POD is not really able to, uh, to capture those regions of a strong fluctuation, uh, both uh, uh, positive and negative, whereas all the autoencoder-based approaches are able 
to actually uh, capture with only five modes, which is a very, very small radio solar model, uh, we're actually able to capture uh, such a, a distribution of strong fluctuations, uh, positive and negative, right? So that's basically uh, an interesting power that we can get from all these autoencoder approaches. What we can actually learn now is how helpful those approaches are when it comes to um, being able to impose interesting physical properties in our radio solar model. Uh, what I'm showing you here is the determinant of the cross-correlation matrix. So that's basically in physical space how uh, correlated the um, basically the different modes are. And of course the POD has 100% uh, orthogonality because by design these modes need to be orthogonal. And what you can see on this panel is the beta variation autoencoder which has over 99% orthogonality. So we are succeeding quite well at um, being able to produce modes that are uh, orthogonal in our physical space. There are two approaches, uh, the autoencoder uh, based on CNNs and the hierarchical autoencoder, they are both having much less orthogonality. So those modes are not going to be orthogonal, which has uh, problems in the context of orthogonality uh, and interpretability, but also problems when it comes to uh, trying to have a parsimonious model. Right? Uh, so this is an interesting property, actually, it seems that we are able to uh, have quite orthogonal modes, that's uh, encouraging, uh, and what I'm showing you here is the effect of the parameter beta. So that's basically the penalization that we are uh, introducing to promote learning those statistically independent variables. So what you can see in this panel is that for a larger value of beta, what you have is, of course, a larger value of the orthogonality, so quite high, but the uh, reconstruction goes down, right? So we are uh, well, having essentially uh, the possibility of reconstructing less energy if we have more orthogonal modes. And that's of course natural, right? Because our loss function uh, is aiming at having a very good reconstruction. That's the first term of the loss function. But also uh, we are trying to introduce uh, another term to promote orthogonality. And you cannot have it all at the same time, right? So that means that uh, we are uh, increasing beta, we are promoting more orthogonal modes. That means that we get less reconstruction, which in practice would mean that I would need more modes uh, to be able to have uh, well, a proper um, reconstruction of a good level of energy from the original signal. In practice, uh, what it means is that we can still have quite compact uh, reduced order models with autoencoders uh, while also retaining the nice property of the orthogonality. Uh, what I'm showing you here is uh, essentially a summary of how those modes look like. Okay? So let's start with the second column. Uh, here is the POD. So these are the first five POD modes. You can see, of course, that uh, being orthogonal, they are able to uh, exhibit quite some interesting physical features. In fact, uh, in the first modes, you can see a large scale shading characteristic of this type of um, uh, flows around obstacles. Uh, in these two columns, I'm showing you the autoencoder based on CNNs and also the autoencoder based on CNS that is also hierarchical. And what you can see is that you have basically a bunch of uh, high and low frequencies, but you don't really see any distinct features that are physical, that uh, can be really understood as something that helps us to learn something about the physics. What is interesting, if we look at the first column over here, which is the beta variation autoencoder, uh, is that these modes are actually exhibiting the same shading mechanism that is identified by the POD modes. Uh, so that's actually the, the key here. We are able to have modes that uh, are well associated with physical phenomena. Uh, they can be interpretable. Uh, they can help us to have a quite parsimonious uh, latent representation of the system. And at the same time, we can ha embed those uh, non-linearities there, right? So we can have these modes that are connected in a non-linear way to be able to represent the original data. What is also interesting, if we come here and now we compare the POD modes and then the autoencoder auto ones, eh, the beta variation autoencoder ones, you see that we identify basically the same large scale features, but we add a lot of high frequency. And basically this would be components that are turbulent fluctuations closely connected with those large scale features that we see over there. So we are able to have the dominant physical mechanisms and superimpose on those, we have those turbulent fluctuations uh, that essentially help us to build a model that is much more uh, compact compared to the POD. So with five modes, we can actually um, 
well, build a very nice representation of the system. And one last property that I mentioned, the optimality, that's also something that we can obtain with the beta variation out encoder modes. So what we would do in the case of the beta VAEs is that we would um, reconstruct the signal based on one of the latent uh, vectors, making all the others zero. Uh, recursively, we would see the first mode that gives us the largest reconstruction, and then we would be adding a second one by making all the others zero, a third one, uh, in such a way that iteratively we can come up with a combination of modes that give us the largest reconstruction. Uh, we can therefore rank these modes, uh, so we can recover the optimality property, and of course maintaining the nice property of the orthogonality. So in practice, what we show in this uh, reference that you can see here is that we can, uh, well, basically propose a methodology for um, optimal and orthogonal nonlinear model decompositions in turbulent flows. We showed it in a case that is reasonably complex. Eh? It's 3D, it's turbulent, we have quite some uh, complexity to, to be able to model there. Uh, and we believe that this can be a very promising approach to be able to um, build ROMs that are compact and can be helpful in quite complex turbulent flows. So I would like to thank you very much for your attention today. This is my contact information. So of course, I'll be very happy to discuss more to answer all your questions. Uh, here is my, my email, the web of my lab, the Vinuesa lab, and also my social media. So please feel free to contact me and uh, I'll be very happy to discuss more with you. Thank you very much.